everyone and welcome to my studio. My name is Eileen Hull and I'm here to share with you an assembly video on one of my new dies from chapter one. I thought I would just show you the other dies that come with the set because they all work together and as usual they will work with other dies that you might have of mine. So the first item is a new 3D folder, it's called Tablecloth, and it was inspired by a tablecloth given to me by my mom, and the detail is just amazing. That's the first one. And we have the library pocket, ATC card, and tabs. And so you can see what you get in this die. This is the little pocket, the ATC card, the tabs, and another label that is really great that fits inside of this journal. And then the other die, this is called the Tiled Alphanumeric die. It's an alphabet and not only do you get the letters, but you also get the negative space. So these lines here are perforated so you can tear them off and combine words using these uh, negative pieces as well as the positive. But this is the die that I really want to talk about. This is the Frame Pocket Journal die. And as you can see, it's big. This is a Bigs Plus die, which means it needs to be cut in one of the nine inch machines, either the Big Shot Plus or the Switch. Uh, it can also be used with the Spellbinders Platinum die cut machine. So let's take a look at the die and I'll just kind of go over some of the points about it. Okay, um, these are the pieces that you get. And let me turn it this way so you can see it better. All right, so um, it goes together a little differently than dies that I've done in the past, which is kind of fun, but it also can be put together in a more traditional way. I'm gonna show you both of them. So when you're cutting your journal, you're gonna want two covers and you'll want one flap. You might want one pocket, you might want two because you can fit two of them inside. And this is a little frame. So this can go on the cover, it could go inside, you could cut it from paper. All of these things, uh, there are endless possibilities where you can use them. You can also cut these out of paper but if you do, you'll have to score them manually because the scoring blades, since this is a scoreboard's die, it's meant to be cutting thick material like mat board, chip board. So the scoring lines may not show up on here if you cut this out of paper. But it's easy to do if you put it on your scoring board and you just kind of, you know, use these guidelines here to score, okay? Another thing that sometimes I do, if I'm gonna put this in a journal or something and it feels a little bulky to me, I may peel layers of this chipboard off to let it lay a little more smoothly, but that's something that you can do if you want, or you don't have to. Same on here. If I were going to attach this to the front of my book and I was having it, you know, be kind of resistant, um, I may peel some of this uh, off, you know, just so it lays a little flatter, but it's up to you, of course, as this is your book, so you do it however you'd like. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of put some combinations together so you can see how this thing goes together, because people have been a little confused about this one. All right, so... What I've done here is I've just folded these two pieces that, uh, have, you know, this is what I get when I cut them out. And let's just get our other little things out here. And there's two pockets because I want to show you that they can fit in here. Okay, so when I'm putting this together, it goes together a little differently. I scored it here and fold it over and always fold it all the way over because you're breaking the fibers and making it easier to work with this thick material because it kind of wants to remember to go back a certain way and you have to train it. Okay, so this is your cover. This will be your front. And what you can do is you can 
cover it with paper before you start, or it's a, it's basically uh, very easy to add your paper on after. Um, what I do, this is my front, and then I'm gonna take this piece here, and I'm going to adhere that down to this tab that's left here, okay? And what I've done with a couple of my bo books is I have stitched them on my sewing machine. I have an old Singer that I don't care about. I use it mainly for um, bookmaking and paper, but don't ruin a machine, you know, but give it a test. And uh, if you, if you want to risk it, go ahead. But I've had good success with it. So just make sure that you've got a little room here because this is going to bend and you would just either glue that down, stitch it down. You could use, you know, wet glue. You could use tape, um, but I would probably make sure that this is a nice and strong join here because you are, this is going to take the most stress where you open and close it. Okay. So then you've got this side over here. And if you want to add the flap, you would just add adhesive onto the back here join here because you are, this is going to take the most stress where you open and close it. Okay. So then you've got this side over here. And if you want to add the flap, you would just add adhesive onto this piece right here and then place your flap on top and close it up. And then you've got a nice little closed journal. So then you could close your book using either Velcro pieces under here or magnets, or you could punch a hole in here with an eyelet maybe and tie some pretty uh, sorry silk or seam binding on here and wrap it around. The other thing that I like to do is put a button on here and then put some elastic over in here, knot it on the inside and then wrap it over to close it. So there's lots of ways that you can uh, close this book up. Okay, so that's one, one thing that you can do. Now, like I said, this will fit uh, two pockets inside, but I wanna show you another way to assemble this before I actually put this together. So another thing that you can do is this spine is adjustable as many of the scoreboard uh, books are. So this could either be, you know, your full four piece signature. And if you wanted to keep it that thick, that would measure one and five eighths inch. You could have a spine that is that thick where you would just overlap these two and you'd have a nice thick book see that but if you want to do it the other way with the flap then that's going to measure about one and one eighth the other option is if you want a really thin book you would just chop these three off and just off both of them and then you would overlap these spines right here to make a skinny book you could do two spines th or three spines and just chop the other ones off. Okay, so you can see that there are options for your binding and also for the construction of the book. So let's go ahead and just put one together really quickly. I'm going to use some double-sided tape just because it's quicker.
covers put together and you could now put what you want inside. So maybe you want a couple pockets. Let's go ahead and let's put one in. this inside our book. So there are a couple places we can do it. We can do it on the front cover and I'm kind of thinking there's a little thing here that I'd maybe want to cover. So we could do it right here. We could do it on the back cover, you know. Um, there's lots of options. There are holes here so you can string three signatures in here or possibly even four depending on the thickness. So it's up to you where you want to put your pocket. You could even put it on the front. Uh, same with your little frame here. So this could go same way. You would put your adhesive on the back and put it on the front here. If there was maybe a photo that you wanted to frame or some kind of focal image, I think that would be really pretty. You could paint this. You can do all kinds of things to chipboard. Uh, you could add some gesso, you could stencil it, you could use your gel plate and, you know, use your prints. You could add texture paste and or even just paper. You can add metal. You could cut this whole thing out of leather, actually, it would be a beautiful journal. The journal measures four and a half by six and a half. So you could add books that measured about four by six, and these would fit perfectly. So you can cut your paper, fold it together, your paper that would measure eight by six, fold it over, and do a stack of maybe 10 to 12 sheets of paper, and then just put them inside here. You can make your own books, or you could purchase them. They probably have them online. I think it's more fun personally to make my own because then I feel like I was more part of um, creating in this, this project. So anyway, that's how the book can go together. There are lots of options as you can see. So I hope you have fun with your frame pocket journal. Please join the Eileen Hall fan club because that's where we share all our interpretations of the dies and everything that goes in them. We'd love to see what you create. That's the Eileen Hall Fan Club. That's a group on Facebook. We have lots of members, probably 7,300 people in it right now, and very talented members. Also, we have the team. They post on the blog on Wednesday. We usually have three to five uh, new projects using the latest dies. Sometimes we go back and kind of bring in other dies too because all these components kind of work together. So you can see these pockets could be used in lots of the other journals. Same with the frame, you know, so I like that they're all kind of interchangeable. So thanks so much for watching and please make sure to check back and see what people are creating with this, uh, either on the blog, in the fan club. You can also watch, I do Facebook Lives twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays at six o'clock Eastern time and four o'clock on Thursdays. And I'd love to have you join us and you can see some tips and tricks, techniques, and other ways to use these dies. Okay, thanks so much for watching.